Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another daily cryptocurrency update. Welcome to the channel. Like and subscribe if you like what you see and let's get right into the information today. So, shocker, we got breaking. The Federal Reserve met again today, Wednesday, and it has cut interest rates yet again by another 0.25%. Again, three rate cuts in a row so far, $120 billion plus in overnight repo loans, and $60 billion a month in treasury bill purchases. Equals ultimate Bitcoin stimulus. Mm, I mean, you can be pro crypto, pro precious metals. I get it. I don't think that this always equates to Bitcoin or even XRP for that matter. But I do want to show that we are in economic distress just because we see a higher stock market price does not mean that the economy is healthy by any means. Today was another S&P 500 all-time high. If you guys keep up with, you know, Greg Manorino's daily vlog market update, I highly recommend that as well. Just to get another perspective and just wanted to share that and kick things off. Right here, XRP Research Center, XRP Center, October 30th, 2019, breaking news. So, we have SBI Group releases the new financial results for SBI, of course, and I'll go through these really quick. So, SBI companies engaged in remittance plan using ODAL on-demand liquidity, which uses XRP. For those of you that do not know, this is 100% XRP. This is what we want as an investor in XRP. None of this is financial advice, guys. I highly recommend you do your own research. Look at multiple sources. And I try to keep a level head, but after, you know, doing this, I've been in the space for like two and a half years. I am very, very bullish. So I try to avoid hype and too much price speculation. But long term, I believe that everything will derive value from pure utility and volume. So we are, you know, still laying the pipes. It's going to take time. If you guys are looking for, you know, to become millionaires overnight, you should go find another channel so they can provide that for you because I don't want to do any, you know, mental masturbation and tell you what you want to hear because I am here to make money. And I'm sure you guys think that's funny that, you know, I said that analogy. Now, SBI Ripple Asia to cover 50% of Ripple Network and SBI VC to expand account acquisition. And then R3 settlement, of course, their system utilizes XRP. R3 has a decentralized application, a D app, and they utilize XRP as the first settlement mechanism. So as we can kind of just look through here, just look at a few of these snippets that he took. So thank you. So Ripple accelerates Ripple network expansion and international remittances utilizing its self-developed DLT distributed ledger technology. So we have SBI Ripple Asia right here. Of course, SBI group invested 60%. And then Ripple is actually the largest outside shareholder investing 40%. Notice with the MoneyGram, I know they call it a strategic partnership. They try to, you know, have those words. In reality, it's almost like a 10% acquisition of MoneyGram because Ripple did have the funds. Brad Garlinghouse, CEO, said that they intend to press their advantage of full court press as they continue to acquire and make strategic investments to not only further enhance the XRP ecosystem, but really just to help payments as a whole and ripple the company to succeed. So now entered into a USD 50 million investment partnership to utilize crypto asset XRP for international remittance solutions. And this is awesome. They're incentivizing market makers, liquidity providers to create the depth in the order books that MoneyGram needs to get ahead of their competition. I think if Western Union is not or does not utilize XRP, it is far too late to create, you know, a competitor and they eventually will be forced to join in some degree or another. Again, that could be my confirmation bias. We will see what happens. MoneyGram is second place. Western Union is first in terms of money transfer service businesses. And then right here on the left side, SBI Remit. And this is a wholly owned subsidiary of SBI Group. And SBI Group companies engaged in international remittance plan, international remittance using XRAPID. This was the former name. Now it is called ODL on demand liquidity. Right here. And these are old slideshows, but I just want to show you guys this goes. This has been going on for years and I'm reshowing this for newcomers because we are getting tons of new subscribers lately. Probably because as we're approaching swell, there's a lot more news coverage, the volume's increasing, and typically around fall, end of year, people might, you know, at least businesses do have extra capital to reinvest. It's volatile times. I think that we're going to see more artificial pumping as a bull market before an inevitable crash of some type. So right here, SBI Remit, one of Japan's largest remittance companies, promoting the further use of Ripple's distributed ledger technology. And since its inception, SBI Remit has been using the MoneyGram network to send money overseas to more than 200 countries and regions in about 350,000 locations worldwide. FYI, guys, Ripple has a 10% stake in MoneyGram, at least, or at least a huge percentage of their stocks as well. So they have a vested interest to let MoneyGram succeed as well. Alex Holmes of MoneyGram CEO will be speaking at the Swell Conference, which is Ripple's annual conference in Singapore um, next week, actually. So... Yeah, on the 7th, so next Thursday, so that's pretty exciting. 
and then again in the future x rapid basically really 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 focusing on the use case of xrp if you guys did not watch or ever see mr yoshitaka katao discuss he was speaking on their financial results today he wholeheartedly with you know the partnerships with r3 sbi and ripple wants all of them to utilize xrp he is a bull on xrp he owns a boatload i can assure you of that and this is what he's been pushing he's just pushing xrp through all ecosystems as much as possible so we get on here now this is astounding progress by money tap which is an application in japan so right now 30 banks invested and this is talking about settlement and instead of just mere x current truly which would be most ideal is settling with xrp so same day literally instant settlement within whether three to five seconds or if you want to argue with the transfers on the other end maybe two minutes regardless it's better than three to five days and you're going to save a lot more money so now nine companies connected via api considering investment from ripple as well and they this is basically summarizing all of these but i can go through these briefly too future services we also have prepaid charges salary prepayment international remittances and to launch cross-border qr payments in 2020 and then of course we've heard about the pay pay partnership so right here for money transfer by money tap next generation infrastructure we can see Ripple down here talking a little bit more about that. And again, guys, if you want me to pause this or you can't read it because the font is too small, I tell you, links in my YouTube video descriptions, create a Twitter account, follow me on Twitter, and keep up with XRP News. I never used Twitter. I hated Twitter. And then finally, I was like, you know what? This community really engages with articles and everything. So instead of me just sitting on Google and reading stuff all day or, you know, on YouTube, I can go here for you know, some concise threads. So highly recommend it. So link in description for that. All right. Talking about MoneyGram, of course, we can see Ripple at the center of this. This has been a long time. This should be no surprise to you guys. This is one of the many reasons I am bullish on Ripple, of course, because these huge organizations are, but you can also find Ripple cited in many, many documents, including Citibank and just a bunch of banks. And I've been saying this a lot lately, but 30% of the top 100 banks in the world are Ripple net partners. They are not using xrp to my knowledge yet but there's always that approach and ripple strategic approach remember crawl walk run it takes time still waiting for regulation obviously with ripple's new office in dc it seems likely that we are in the clear and regulation does not bother me you guys can comment and say it's a security i guarantee that it will not be not financial advice just one man's opinion all right, right here, Michael, Val5 Links, just going with this PayPay partnership that I was referencing. Ripple supported Japanese payment application MoneyTap teams up with PayPay, not PayPal, PayPay, offering payments to 10 million users and 1 million merchants in Japan with their system replaced by the XRP ledger. We're going to see more and more of this um, article. Basically, is just a synopsis of the same thing. Right here, Finextra. Join Finextra. So we got ACI Worldwide and Swift on the 5th of November. Remember, remember the 5th of November at 2019 for their third, let's see, for the third in our global webinar series looking at how banks can maximize on their Swift GPI investment and prepare for 2020. Swift GPI, guys, just like X Current. Again, this is not a threat to X rp at least i almost said x rapid i'm referencing odl odl on demand liquidity utilizing xrp is literally the only solution at hand right now even if these groups go on to create their own walled ecosystems they still need a bridge asset and interoperability protocol such as ilp and again we've seen ntt data the world's fourth largest it firm in the world create documentations and powerpoints for this years ago and spreading it building the infrastructure to completely update and renovate the real-time growth settlement system in the whole infrastructure that we see today just to show you this i show this every couple months we got october 2018 aci worldwide will support xrp's real-time payment system after customers executed 14 trillion dollars in daily transactions yes 14 trillion dollars in securities transactions i might add so right here aci worldwide has revealed that it will support xrp's real-time payment system aci is a network that powers e-payments for more than 5100 organizations globally gave a hint via its platform according to the firm the 1000 large our largest financial institutions plus thousands of merchants around the world who uses this platform will complete transactions worth 14 trillion in securities daily that is a lot of money that is a lot of volume needing to be settled on a daily basis try instantly as well at a fraction of the cost guys when you reduce savings and i know typically you know x current 40 to 60 percent and then 
ODL or on-demand liquidity utilizing XRP, depending on how much liquidity is there, you might be able to get the get savings up to you know anywhere from 60 to 70, maybe 80 percent. That's pushing it. But again, even a 10 percent, 5 percent difference when you're talking about trillions of dollars, that is very, very significant. Any public companies or any company for that matter, their ears will perk up, especially their shareholders. Told their users that ACI supports about 9% of SWIFT's traffic globally. I don't know if you guys have seen different charts. Just for fun, price speculation. Again, there's so many variables. You cannot predict the future price of XRP. I will tell you it should be a lot more than 30% when the, fl the switch is flipped. That is why I'm investing. Now, with approximately 30% of that percentage in the United States, the company went on to add that it offers, to, or offers services to banks that want to leverage SWIFT's GPI, their global payments initiative. When it comes to XRP, ACI insists that it supports the network's real-time payment system globally. Banks around the world via this platform can deeply deploy a real-time scheme to support GPI, SWIFT, and DLT in reference to XRP and Ripple's technology, as well as wire and immediate transactions. All right, next. Wrath of Conman. I never know how to say your name, but thank you. You have some awesome content. So interesting to see, and I, I pronounce this Fenabler, Fenabler. So feel free to correct me and let me know. I try to Google it. I've been reading it for years, but again, always butcher it. Interesting to see. Fenabler thinks of Ripple and Swift as the last mile connectivity. Good to see Ripple noted under connectivity. I wonder what size payments are they thinking of here? And I think that they, you know, obviously they're sending low value for the time being. But if you didn't realize there's well over five trillion that Swift needs to settle on a daily basis. Ripple was literally built to replace this entirely. So think high value, but it does take time to develop that liquidity in the order books to make sure that Ripple's software, ODL, or even if Swift just creates and utilizes XRP with their own, they still need enough liquidity in the system to actually make it have that cost savings. When it works, it is going to work better than anything, but you need to develop this and scale this over time as well. Unless they have been and everything on the back end is ready to go, then hypothetically, could they flip the switch? Yeah, I mean, anything is possible. I just don't want to over speculate. Now, right here, connecting, and then we can see Swift, Ripple, and then we got immediate payment services. So 190 plus integrated partners. But good to see that Ripple is acknowledged here. Should be no surprise, though. And I don't know why people, you know, are not talking about this a little bit more. And we got David Watt just showing, talking about the Corda app or the D app as well. And then right here, this is pretty cool. So I just wanted to show you this. I'm not sure who made this, if this was just for fun, but I did want to share it. So I don't care if you guys think this is speculation. All investing is speculative. So right here, Cryptomaniac Ripple becomes the standard for global money transfers 2017 to 2020. Well, we're running out of time because it's almost 2020. So we better kick it in the gear soon. And with all the quantitative easing that the Federal Reserve is doing, it really has me thinking. So timeline, 2009, Bitcoin's invented on Halloween. So almost, again, 10-year anniversary. Now, Ripple is born in 2012, 2014, we got R3, which is the 300 plus banking consortium again, and they do have tons of XRP, and they use XRP as the first settlement mechanism. Are they live with it? I do not believe so. If they are, it's extremely low vol volume, but they are going to be the big boys that move trillions, whereas, if not even more, and then Ripple will move more so just billions. And that's my personal belief, and that's kind of what Yoshitaka Katao has said, and he kind of spearheads and leads both groups, R3 and Ripple, as he is the CEO of SBI. So then 2015, we have ILP, Interledger Protocol, we got Ethereum's born, and then Hyperledger is created. Okay, Hyperledger Quilt, 2016, SBI, Ripple Asia, Japan is born, and then we got the first DLT banking network, and then 2017 to 2020, this is what their timeline is, whoever made this for fun or their goals, who knows, but some type of roadmap. Ripple becomes the standard for international money transfers between banks, and then Interledger Protocol, ILP, becomes the standard protocol for connecting banks' cash ledgers. So Interledger bringing and bridging all of these ledgers that cannot communicate normally as part of Ripple software. Then 2020 to 2025, blockchain solutions for capital markets, trade finance emerge, such as R3 Corda, the Fabric, etc. And then ILP Java becomes the interoperability standard for hyper Hyperledger Foundation projects. And yes, guys, with all Hyperledger, I mean, a lot of the projects that we see in deep, you know, deep dives and research, we still see Ethereum with XRP. Ethereum does have smart contract capabilities. I know Codius can use XRP, Ethereum, or anything like that. So we will see. I mean, there's so much money. There's so much value in the world. I wholeheartedly believe in an ecosystem where a lot of the top cryptos that actually serve purposes and are built and have sound technology and a sound team will survive and thrive together. But of these 2,000, 3,000 cryptos, 
I think that there's going to be, you know, thousands, if not 2000 that just go away forever and are complete scams out of money or just ICOs altogether. Next, blockchains and distributed ledger solutions mature and all asset exchange networks become interoperable with inter-ledger protocol. And this is moving all of the value. This is not moving cryptocurrency. This is not just moving money. This is not just moving gold, equity, stock, securities, derivatives. We're talking all of the money, especially when everything is tokenized. We can, you know, properties, you name it. Ooh, all right. And then this is the last one I wanted to go over. This is really cool. So we got Matt Matthew Linney. Thanks for this post. So Bank of England, BOE, we know they are a RippleNet partner. Partner. We know that Mark Carney is a huge bull, at least a supporter of Ripple, the company, and RippleNet and their technology and works with the financial technology groups such as Ripple all the time. And new finance and new economy. So look at this speech literally on the 27th of this month, so just a few days ago. It says openness and integration, the new finance and new economy in a global context. Speech given by Dave Ramsden, Deputy Governor for Markets and Banking. So I know this is not Mark Carney, but it's from Bank of England, and we already know Mark Carney's stance. And this is what I wanted to show. I'm just going to read this verbatim and call it a day. So the second priority priority to leverage existing forums to promote global cooperation and coordination on technology issues. Regulators across the globe are not always going to agree on what technologies they want to use and how they fit into regulatory frameworks. However, global financial institutions for policy coordination such as the FSB, BIS, Bank of International Settlements, and IMF, International Monetary Fund, provide important forums in which we can highlight concerns and work to find agreement where it exists. At the Bank of England, where or we want to work with our partners to ensure we harness the benefits of technology in a way that maintains financial stability. This is the same talk track that Christine Lagarde of the IMF has always used. Maintaining and adopting technology that maintains financial stability. So it's some type of, you know, soft transition, it seems. And we want to work with our international partners to ensure fintech financial technology is supported by international cooperation rather than creating new dislocation. Boom. Really, really like that, guys. So again, just emphasize they need a technology that maintains financial stability, something with either a steady rollout or something that can at least aid in bridging and creating this level playing field, just like one of the largest banks in the world, HSBC, has been advertising now that saying, that adage, a level playing field. Donald Trump has said a level playing field. Christine Lagarde has said a level playing field. We are seeing this everywhere. And even Ripple, yes, Brad Garlinghouse has said a level playing field. This should just become a drinking game because I've heard that term so much, at least in 2019, that it's not even funny. So let me know your thoughts down below, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.